Unit 3, Individual Gardens and Community Gardens. Gardens in general. In this unit, we're going to look at vegetable gardens, both individual gardens on private property or vacant lots, and community gardens, where the community provides space for members to create their own gardens. In the context of this course, individual gardens are those that are maintained by an individual or a family and that are not part of a community garden area. Such gardens are sometimes referred to as kitchen gardens, though that term could apply equally to individual plots within community gardens. Also, such gardens have always been a part of the urban and suburban and even rural landscape, but declined in popularity in the early 1900s as inexpensive mass-produced food became more readily available. During World War II, the government promoted the idea of victory gardens, encouraging people to grow more of their own food so more food will be available to send to troops. This resulted in a resurgence in home gardening. The government estimated that uh, during World War II, Victory Gardens were responsible for producing 9 to 10 million tons of fresh fruits and vegetables, which was equal to all the commercial production going on at the time. So we can see individual gardens can be productive. Most home vegetable gardens are relatively small and produce only a few variety of crops. However, it is possible to grow enough food to completely feed a family on quite a small lot. And you will see that in one of the multimedia viewing assignments for this unit. Also, the relatively small size of most home gardens makes possible a kind of intensive gardening that allows for very high production rates per square foot. Individual gardens are often far more productive per square foot, usually far more productive per square foot than large commercial farms. Here we see a home vegetable garden um, and this is made in a type of raised bed using logs as edging. Um, raised bed gardens such as this are easily contained. Uh, it's easy to keep the lawn out of the garden, for instance, and the garden out of the lawn. And the soil is easily amended, resulting in really high productivity. Commercial individual gardens. Hmm. This seems like a misnomer. Commercial individual gardens? But at least one group has found an entrepreneurial way to create individual gardens. They create vegetable gardens for individuals on the individual's property. They then maintain those gardens. Their work is paid for by the homeowners who receive the benefits of a home garden without the work. People who may not have time, who travel a lot, who may not be able to maintain a garden on their own can pay this group to maintain the garden for them. They get the benefit of the produce from the garden. The entrepreneurs maintain gardens for many individuals. So each person, each individual gardener can maintain gardens for yeah, a dozen, two dozen or more families, and they call themselves urban farmers without land. Ah, community gardens. In the context of this course, community gardens are essentially individual gardens that are grouped on public property, provided expressly for that purpose. All the production possibilities of individual gardens applies to community gardens with the usual exception of raising animals. That's usually not something allowed in a community garden. The biggest difference between an individual garden and a plot in a community garden is of course just the location. However, community gardens often have rules regarding pesticide application and some have rules regarding fertilizer applications as well. They have rules 
regarding maintenance requirements, volunteer requirements, and similar things to allow the community garden to function smoothly. This is a photograph of Oakhurst Community Garden in Atlanta, Georgia. A uh, typical community garden, except that this one has a greenhouse available uh, for the members to use to start seeds early in the year. What are some of the benefits of community gardens? Well, one of the reading assignments for this unit is a summary of research being done on the benefits of community gardens, but I'll quickly address a few points here. Obviously, the availability of fresh food is a benefit, but a less well-known benefit is the fostering of a feeling of community. Communities tend to take pride in their community gardens. Often, produce excess to the needs of the gardener is donated to food banks and community kitchens, a source of much needed fresh produce for the community as a whole. Vacant land, often an eyesore, can be made productive and attractive by community gardens. And educational opportunities abound for young and old alike, from the basics of how to garden to more involved topics such as composting, um, soil maintenance, uh, plant nutrition, all of the things that we discussed as educational benefits in uh, previous unit exist with community gardens. Creating and managing community gardens? Well, in the reading and viewing assignments, you'll see some different methods of starting a community garden. Some are the product of the municipality, often the parks department of the municipality. Some are sponsored by businesses, and some are the result of groups of citizens lobbying the municipality for space to create a community garden. One thing all such gardens, successful gardens, have in common is a set of guidelines for the participants, the gardeners, to follow, as well as good communication of information pertaining to the garden. An active involvement is important in continuing success. You'll see that in some of the uh, reading and viewing assignments for this unit, how important it is to set up lines of communication and to have certain rules enforced to make sure that uh, the community garden is a success. But that completes this unit.